Hello students. Today we're still looking at markets. We talked about demand earlier and we introduced supply. Now we'll talk about when does the supply curve shift. So we have to be clear when we're looking at a movement along the same supply curve versus a shift to a whole new supply curve. This is very similar to the issue we saw earlier with demand. So the first graph here is showing you a movement along the same supply curve. It's still the same curve. We're just switching to a different point on it. In the second graph, we jump from one curve to another. So a price change always gives you a movement along the supply curve. So here, price was $5 originally, and people bought five units. If price goes up, or sorry, I should say, firms produced five units. This is just the supply side. We don't know how many of those people bought. So if firms produced five units when the price was five. When the price goes up to eight, now they're going to produce eight units. But we're still on the same supply curve. The overall relationship between price and quantity is still given by the same line. Now, if something other than price were a change, that gives you a different supply curve. It can shift it back like we see over here, or it can shift it in the other direction, depending upon what's going on. So here are things that can shift supply. So a change in the input costs can shift supply. So the firm's um, raw inputs, like their, the raw materials become cheaper or more expensive, that can shift supply. Technology can also shift supply. Tax and subsidies are on our list. I'll mostly just gloss over that in this chapter. Chapter five will give that much more attention, so stay tuned for that. The number of firms can also affect the supply curve. If more firms enter a market, now there's more supply than there was previously. Price expectations can affect supply. So while a change in price gives you a movement along, a change in price expectations gives you a shift. So here are some of the vocabulary we use to talk about supply changes. So this graph over here, we start out on our blue line and shift to the golden line. You could describe that in any one of three ways. You could say supply shifts back. That's the term that I've been using and I recommend that. Supply shifts left also works. Supply shifts up is true but misleading. So here's why. In our intuition, we often associate up with more. In this case though, supply shifts up actually means that we're supplying less. So if price were, let's say over here, we originally produced this amount. Now, once supply shifts, we're only gonna produce this smaller quantity back here. So supply shifts up actually means less supply, not more supply. So if you try to say things like supply shifts up or supply shifts down, you can do it correctly, but so unintuitive that it's a good chance you'll make a mistake. That's why I recommend just stay away altogether from supply shifts up. Just use these other terms. Supply shifts left, I feel more neutrally about that one. I don't automatically associate left or right with meaning more or less, so at least it doesn't clash with my intuition. My favorite one, though, is supply shifts back. 
So it accurately describes what's going on in our picture and it's intuitive. Shifting back sounds like we're going backwards, sounds like we're supplying less and we are supplying less. So this one makes the most intuitive sense. That's why I recommend saying supply shifts back. So there's also the other direction. I like saying supply shifts out. Supply shifts out sounds like we're expanding, we're going outwards, which means we're supplying more. And that is indeed what's happening here. So if price were say out here, we used to supply this amount. Once supply shifts out, now we're supplying this bigger quantity out here. So shifts out means more supply. That makes intuitive sense. Supply shifts right. Again, that one's neutral. I don't automatically associate shifting right with mean more or being less. So it's not as intuitive as shifting out, but at least it's not counterintuitive. Supply shifts down is the one I recommend avoiding because that just clashes with your intuition. We just established that this shift means we're actually having more supply. Shifting down sounds like less, which sounds like less supply. So you'll just create unnecessary confusion for yourself. So in short, preferred terms are shift out and shift back. Try to stay away from shifts down or shifts up. So now let's go through our list with the exception of taxes and subsidies, and we'll see how it can shift supply. So let's say that Norton has a company and Norton is making bread. So Norton could make more bread if he wants, but similar to our earlier story, that means either expanding your factory, which is expensive, or paying workers overtime, also expensive. Now, one important input in making bread is wheat. You have to have wheat to make bread. Let's say that wheat gets cheaper. As a result, that expansion production, which involves either paying your workers overtime or buying a factory, can now be worthwhile because you're saving money on wheat. So now you can produce more, which means your supply curve, let's use our terminology properly, supply curve shifts out. So we used to supply this amount over here on this blue line, but now we're expanding and we're down over here now. If on the other hand, wheat became more expensive, you'd see the opposite. So now some loaves of bread that have been just barely profitable, or was just barely breaking even on them, become unprofitable. He had all the same expenses he had earlier, but now he also has this higher cost of wheat that he has to pay. As a result, Norton's gonna wanna cut back on production. He's gonna lay off some workers or do something like that. As a result, supply is going to contract, which means the supply curve is going to shift back. So that's how input costs work. For technology, um, it's very, very similar. It's so similar that I actually won't go through a separate example. When technology gets better, it lowers your input costs. So if you get to do things on a computer instead of doing it all by hand, that's going to save you a lot of time and effort on labor so you can cut back on labor. So that's reducing one of your input costs. So technology getting better and input costs going down look exactly the same. As promised, taxes and subsidies will be addressed later on. So let's move on to talking about the number of firms. <coughs> so when more firms enter, now there's gonna be more supply. 
So the firms that were previously not in the market were not producing anything, but now they're making something. So overall supply is bigger than it was before. That causes supply to shift out. Now sometimes a market becomes unprofitable for some firms and they drop out. So in that case, supply is going to shift back and there's going to be less supply than there was earlier. Price expectations also can shift supply. Again, to be clear, a change in price gives you a movement along. Price expectations, though, give you a shift. So to clear up some confusion here, I think your book's examples are a bit inaccurate. So your book talks about if Valentine's Day is approaching, then people have a larger willingness to pay for flowers. But actually, that's not a supply shift. That's a demand shift. The people buying flowers are on the demand side. Suppliers are the ones who are producing flowers. So that's not a supply example. Your book also talks about electronics, like if a new phone comes out, people are less willing to buy the old phone. So far, it's all true, but again, this is actually a demand shift, not a supply shift. So don't be misled by your book's examples. So what's a real example of price expectations shifting supply? Let's talk about stocks. That would work. So if you think the company's stock price is going to go down in the future, you're going to want to sell the stocks now while the price is still relatively high. So that expectation of future prices will cause you to supply more shares, try to sell more shares today. That's a valid example. So as a result, here's what the graph is going to look like. Here is our old supply curve over here in blue because we are trying to offload the shares while we still can we're going to increase supply of shares being sold so we're going to shift out to this golden line over here so you can see at the same price we're now selling more than we used to it also is reversible a lot of our examples in this class are reversal, which means it goes in the other direction as well. If you think that the shares price is going to go up in the future, then you want to hold on to your stocks. You don't want to sell them. So now shareholders become more reluctant to sell. That's going to decrease the supply of stocks. Supply is going to shift back in that case. So that wraps up our section on shifts in supply. Be sure to tune in for our next episode in which we will talk about equilibrium.